Hello guys, I am Sean Lebro, and today I'm gonna finish up the tutorial, actually, on how I make a character. Now, um, basically, well, let me check for this. Okay, sorry. Usually that stops the recording, uh, but it happens every time I record, and then I have to do it again. So we're lucky this time. Either way, I'm gonna try to give you a fast tutorial. So I'm not done showing you everything about my game, and I have a lot to go. But I want to show you how to do this if you'd like to do one for yourself. I'm not saying copy this game or anything like that. I mean, if you want to make a Super Smash Bros. kind of game, I'll give you the basics of it. And then if you want more, I can give you more. I can give you the code, too. I'm going to show you most of the drag and drop options. I have a lot of code in here, actually, at some parts. Um, and you'll see that. But I probably won't show you the actual coding because it's pretty in-depth. Uh, I'll admit, I just I learned it from watching other people as well. So... Uh, there's lots of great tutorials. I haven't seen any for Super Smash Bros. Not saying there are none, but uh, so I, I wanted to show you one today. And um, also, gaming is amazing. That video I've been working on is probably going to be out by this weekend. As I mentioned, it's looking pretty good. And I'm going to do another GTA 5 Funny Moments montage in a little bit. And uh, that's what I had planned. So anyway, let's get into the actual video. So basically, you're going to have objects. Uh, in game maker if you're using what I'm using and then uh, I can probably make this big for you so basically name your character whatever it's not really important what your name is it's more um, when you code you want to name it with an underscore so sometimes you so uh, you know if there's a space there or not but the game maker is nice and I'll still realize it it will still recognize it for you so you don't have to do that it's recommended but it's not mandatory in Game Maker. Uh, so you're gonna need a mask for the fighting games. You take the character and you simply resize. You you take the character and then make a white block of it. Just copy the character and paint the entire thing white or red or whatever color you want to paint it. You're not gonna see it. And make it slightly smaller than the character. This means that the hitbox will only be within the character's body. And you can mess with that but this is what you're gonna want and then I'm gonna show you the basic steps of there's there's actually a lot but I'm gonna show you the basic steps so um okay let's start so you're gonna want to do this uh, but first of all before we do that I'm, I'm not gonna show you that today I do want to show you that and I know if you, you think why did I just tell you all that but it's important for the next part and that and what I just told you is not in the next part. You're going to need to figure it out yourself depending on your name. So, uh, sorry if that confused you. The point is, get the mask, and, um, and then I'm telling you about AI, because AI is the hardest part. If you know the basics, you can pretty much figure out how to make the characters perform. It's not gonna be perfect, and I understand that, and mine's not perfect either. But uh, so let's go into the actual AI because that's the hardest part. That's what I wanted to show you. But I've shown you the the player for the for the name because all the this is how I differentiate when it's just when it's a character that you control. I don't put the underscore when it's an AI. I put the underscore, and that's how I can tell. So anyway, let's just go. So you're gonna want to start off with whatever sprite that it is that you want to start the character off with. Um, so if you want him to be running as if uh, it's a game based on score, like how far you could go, kind of like Jetpack Shore Ride or something like that, then you could set it off running. If it's a game where you control it um, from the start and it's not an animation, then pick a standing sprite. You could pick a falling sprite if he falls in from somewhere. Whatever, pick that. And now you're going to definitely want to pick step, the step event. Um because the step event will I'll, let, I'll explain this to you so that you're not just listening to me and hopefully you can learn for yourself the step event allows things to happen in an order like you could pick any of these things could be in a random order uh, but these things will happen in order in step event where some of them are random which is good for other things but for AI you're going to want the step event and um, okay, so there's lots of code, but I have these little pieces of code here for you. So global dot jump equals true. So basically, whatever he jumps with, which it's an AI, so he's going to jump by himself. He's going to jump every time. There's not going to be a time where he can't jump, unless you want to put it on. Um, 
you could add an if um if then if or or um and statements you could add any of those three together and if it was in an area with high gravity and you didn't want them to jump there you could choose that as well and then you're going to have to write this whole thing uh, basically if he lands on um if turn dot x is great is less than x then the image scale is negative one that means it'll flip the scale um so get that down you can pause it if you need it basically when he jumps he'll uh land the same way that he was in the air set the horizontal horizontal speed to zero that means he won't be moving when he hits the ground and then image speed that's whatever speed you want the animation to go if you're animated like master chief is when he runs then you're going to want to pick a speed of the images to go by okay now the start block and the end block aren't really needed but they're organizational tools and they'll help you it's a good habit to get into um, but start of the block so they're needed in a sense they're needed for this to happen at this point but if you want it to happen globally you could do that as well either way they're still important so they're an easy put in here so I would just do it so start of a block basically this x 0 y 1 relative if the position is collision free he lands there without any problems and uh, <coughs> excuse me so um, if he lands there and there's nothing there, then he'll stand on the ground and go back to his uh, normal animation. But how's he going to land if he doesn't have gravity? So you got to set the gravity all in the same step. So it's saying when this gravity is applied, this effect happens. So set the gravity. Um, by You're going to want to say 270 anytime you're going uh, down. But the, the actual gravity speed isn't important it's just whatever you want else and then the gravity could be zero so if he's on the ground you don't want him to have gravity um, you don't want him to fall through the ground because he has too much gravity so if he's in the air have gravity uh, and block and then now this is a lot of stuff but I'm only going to show you one if you're doing as I said Super Smash Bros game then you want to do another start of a block and for each attack you want the AI to be able to do or jump. I've only done three so far for each of the 24 characters that I have here. Um, the 24 AIs and characters. I've only done three attacks and and or move or and or jumps or running or grapples or anything like that for each of the AI so far. I still have a lot to do, but so basically you're gonna do the test chance. Now it's the little die. Basically it means when it's rolled one out of thirty times, he's going to use this attack, but that's not that's not actually as bad as it sounds. Like you think, why well, he never attacks? Well, actually, every like there's a if he starts off running, which you'll see later. We have yet to get to that, and I'm going to do this in two parts as well, so you won't see that today even. But uh, when he's running, every like every hundredth of a second is a step. So he could be using this all the time, and who knows how many times he will get in a row. Um, it won't be constant, but my point is he'll be using this a lot more than it looks like. Um, and then you're going to want to do this. Um, I've looked at many guides online. Again, nothing for a Super Smash Bros., and most people don't include this. You don't need to. You can code for this uh, specifically, and some people prefer that, but I like this more than the coding for this situation because even though you do less with this it, it gets the job done you just need more drag and drop options so it's simpler um, either way they're both good but uh, so just change into the sprite that you want him to do if he goes right which is what you can put for this then put make him run right and then you get the code so master chief dot alone choose you know this so I understand what it means, but it's not really important that you do. If you want to under, if you want to know, it just means once that alarm goes off, uh, which is in Master Chief running, then he'll choose to do one of those things. In this case, I chose 30 size for um, the running, and then this one's when he's shooting, and this one's probably jumping. Yeah, so he's got an attack when he runs and when he jumps, and they're all the same thing. You don't have to have the code for the other ones because um, if he's shooting 
again, I'm getting ahead of myself. If he's shooting or jumping and you don't want him to do more than one, then you don't need to tell him to stop because he'll only be able to do one. You'll program that later. So turn. Okay, so turn is what I put at the end of each stage. Basically, it's a block that you put that's transparent. You don't see it. Once the AI hits that, they won't fall off the screen. They'll immediately turn around. So if it's a stage such as Final Destination in Super Smash Bros, Super Smash Bros Melee, or Super Smash Bros Brawl, um, they're all they're all slightly different, but you know, Final Destination is still Final Destination. All of those, they won't just run off the side of the map. So I call it turn. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it anything whatever you want. So add collision with. It's in the add event. Collision with turn means that he'll change into Master Chief running. Master Chief running is uh, the opposite way I have. He starts out facing right, and Master Chief running is facing left. So it's going to sound confusing. It's going to be a lot easier once I get into Master Chief running, but I want to show you this for now. And, um, okay, floor. So now this is the floor, just the ground transparent area that you don't see that you put behind the map designs. So this is... To be honest, I don't even know what this means. I didn't find this out from a video. I actually play. I actually used a tutorial many years ago. I've been doing this for a long time, and um, I know what it does. I don't know why. Is my point? Like basically, whenever you want to add it so that he won't fall through the map, you want to say move the contact at such a speed in direction, in the direction that he's falling, fall to that speed, and don't don't go to zero once he hits the floor. So basically, it just keeps him on the ground, but I don't understand why you say, um, like why you have to say maximum of 12, because the gravity already does that for you, but it's, it is relevant, because I act, I just learned out, I, I just learned out, I just figured out what it means, but, uh, I just, I still don't completely understand it. Basically, this says that if you're on the ground and you fall for any reason, like if you were to go off of a small hill and just fall without jumping, it'll only be 12. So it is relevant. It, it used to confuse me for a long time. I think I understand it now. But no problem. Okay, I'm only going to do Master Chief running for this time. You got two more, and um, then I'm going to show you some level designs and everything. But let's get into this. So Master Chief running. Uh got your running sprite right here okay so here are the alarms I was talking about in that other code now so at alarm zero then he'll he can go at five to ten in a random range of speed so different run speeds with different animation speeds and then it's a code for the same thing basically but this piece of code actually activates the alarm and it's at 10 to 15 random range so, and then this is the same thing, just with different ranges. So he can go randomly, he can go left at five, negative five to 10, which is, you know, left at five to 10, or left at 10 to 15, run or walk, basically. The, the lower one of um, five to 10 is a walking speed in the right direction, and then random speed of right and left. And then right here, um, this would be walking right and this is actually this could actually be negative if you want them to go left but I program for that later step okay I'm not gonna have to go over much of this because it's pretty much the same thing so image speed which I already told you gravity set up the same way okay now this is important so if the vertical speed is larger than 15 then set the vertical speed to 15. That means he can't fall as much speed as he can pick up. He won't fall faster than 15. What is 15? To be honest, I don't know. If you use Game Maker, you'll figure out what the different speeds are. But I can't tell you like 15 centimeters. I don't know that. But basically, it doesn't have to be 15. That's what I chose because it's it's something that looks good, in my opinion, for the for how high they jump. And the platforms to jump off it looks like 15 is a good speed for that and then you have this so uh this is the same kind of thing from the running you do it so that he can either stop running turn around or shoot or jump he can jump but i have it so that uh the ai stops you don't say it it's not rough but he stops before he jumps so it's not into running and jumping he actually stops and then jumps 
again you don't see it so it looks smooth but it makes it easier so that it doesn't fly off the course by going off of the turn remember remember it has to hit that turn so you personally if you're doing a map like that then that's what I would do okay and then this is probably one of the uh, this is probably another important one um you don't want him just going left the whole game, hitting turn, turning around, and then doing a random event of turning around and just keep going on the left. So you have a random event of him walking toward the middle. And then you can have a random event of walking toward the right or left side, jumping on a certain platform, whatever you want. But the point is you want to have him go in a certain direction so that he's not doing the same thing because it just it's all based on luck. So that's the code you type in. Um, sorry you can't see my mouse I probably should have mentioned that earlier but that's okay uh, you don't really need to it's just just read the boxes so reverse horizontal direction um, move at your speed that you chose and then zero it's the same thing as uh, we did with Master Chief AI except it was in turn now you're doing it with wall so if you're doing an enclosed level not turn but if you're doing an enclosed level like um one of the test stages in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, then you could put a wall there and he'll turn around immediately. And um, even if he's in the air, he'll turn around and start going the other direction. Now, turn. So if he's running and he hits the turn, then he's going to go straight for the middle. He'll turn around and he won't keep running into the left or right side. And then the floor is the same as before. Now, I said a lot of that fast and it really deserves a long explanation. So if you don't understand, feel free to leave a comment and I will gladly try to explain it for you. I'm not some sort of programming expert, but I've just been doing it for a long enough time that I know a decent amount about of it. About <laughs> a decent amount about it, not about of it. Sorry about that. Um So I hope I helped. Um uh, Game Maker is actually something that I like a lot. Not that you want not that you shouldn't like it, but um so I like doing the games, but I also like programming them, and I made a few, and I want to showcase uh, some stuff. So I want to also show people how to do it, because I know that I couldn't find a Super Smash Bros. tutorial when I needed it. So, not that that's anybody's fault, and maybe someone uploaded it now, I've been working on it for several months. But either way, my point is, I want other people to at least have help if they need it. Um, other than that... Uh, please watch Gaming is Awesome and Gaming is Amazing because Gaming is Amazing is almost out if you're watching this past a week of the release date of this video Gaming is Amazing will be out um, and the videos I really take pride in because they take lots of editing so anyway that's just a quick message hope I helped again if you need help just leave a comment send me a message whatever you want to do I'll help you out personally and I appreciate you guys for watching this video um, if you enjoyed, please rate, comment, subscribe. If it helped you, then you can comment that as well. It doesn't have to just be an error. And again, I just appreciate it. That's all. So thank you guys. See you next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>